I'm concluding this session with a talk about uh, a bit of functional medical image analysis in an interactive way. And uh, I will show you this demo using functional languages and the uh, special image processing library called IGRA, not uh, Viagra. Um, <laughs> that's running at conferences. Don't worry. Um, um, depending on the time, we'll also see some common lists, however, I'll put the main of them in this talk using the bracket. But you're all also familiar with the bracket, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, let's do the agenda to start with a short introduction, then what we did to figure out our integration library, which called big bracket in between big bracket and bracket for medical image analysis. But before we start, just a short introduction. So, by medical image analysis, um, I refer to some kind of two-dimensional images. Obviously, in that context, we also have 3D images, like from MRT, functional MRT, or MRI, in the English term, language, and CT, so computer tomography. But you can also consider single slides of these images. You may have seen this by a doctor, which is also doing this in a slice-wise manner, presenting and discussing with you. Or you can, for example, use microscope, microscopy images, and so on and so on. Um, but the main applications in the medical context take place on an object level. So it's not really the image or the image of the scene, but it's more how behave the objects that are imaged there. So, which means that you basically have to segment your image somehow first, then you have some objects. Um, nonetheless, there are some global measurements which are taken on medical images, so like density measurements. But I want to, um, for this talk, more focus on the object lab. And obviously the step for, even for human and also for experts, from a complete image to the segmented object is uh, not trivial. So, the next thing which was hidden in the title was an interactive workflow. So, what do we mean by this? Right now I can give you the answer just before we see the demo. Interactivity today for us just means we work with the interpreter. I have no fancy GUI right now, um, neither on record nor on common list, but it's really interactive work, interactive exploring, and that's also why experts of this field like. So they don't want to put in some program, compile it, look at the results, then see, okay, that wasn't quite what I imagined to be, and then do it again, compile it again. So, they want to work with the images, with the cells imaged, for example, on the images, interactively. They then try to develop heuristics, so let's see how can I get from this image to a better representation, for example, another image or statistical um, description of the regions, and uh, they usually start with some building blocks. So that's one main effort of the library I present. It mainly consists of building blocks. There are also other computer vision libraries uh, that give you this so-called one-click solution. And this one-click solution is as good as it is if it works. But if the one-click fails, you have nearly no idea what you can change. So you have just to switch it off. And when you use these building blocks, you have much more power over your algorithm. We use it also in uh, spentacle practices. So um, that's also where you gain knowledge when you really go into the field of image processing and image analysis, not just push on a button and see works or doesn't work. So hopefully at the end they find a solution for the research, <coughs> carry out their measurements, and so on. So right now I give you an impression what we did so far, um, and especially in the last year. <coughs> First of all, consider this is your input image. Um, this is an image of red blood cells who are colorized during some methods and then laid on the, an object plate and taken an image under the microscope. And maybe you want to do some measurements on these cells. As you may see, some Some cells look like you would estimate for red blood cells, and uh, some others don't. And the reason why there are some abnormal cells, or some abnormal looking cells, 
is that this patient or the blood of this patient is a sign of the disease. It's called sickle cell anemia. And uh, this is a very common disease in the equatorial region because there are some hints that people with uh, this disease are a bit of or have developed a bit of immunity with respect to malaria. Yeah. So quite, however, it is a disease and these other people, uh, these people um, suffer from other um, deficits but are somehow immune to malaria. But uh, if you want to determine if uh, such a guy has this disease or not, you have to look at the, these images or these kind of images. So the first step might be okay I want to segment the image into two parts. First part is the background and the other part is then the cells or let's call it non-background. And that can be done for example by thresholding, you may need some pre-processing and so on. Um, then you want to go on the object level, so you have to define some objects. And a very basic way to define these objects is just to say they are connected components, so connected pixels. For example, if you run a connected component detection on this image, you will end up with a lot of connected components. So this is the non-obvious, but the first region, it's the background region, it's also connected. You can label this with a zero, then you can do this so far and so forth. And like this. And now you see that you gain more information because you don't just have an image with, which contains zeros and ones, but you have all these components labeled and you can now carry on some measurements on these. For example, you can combine these images and the label information to build such a statistics table um, where you know the size of each, each region, so this is obviously in the background quite large, and uh, some smaller size, you can also include some bounding box information and some color information, or even color statistics, like the min color, the max color, the mean color. And this is done by combining both images in this general processing pipeline. And that was mainly the effort we made in the last of you to integrate this kind of pipeline into the functional language extension. Okay, so where is it really functional? There are some toolkits available for general and medical image processing and they are GUI based and uh, I'll come to this later on. So you start with an image and then you have some kind of building blocks because people tend uh, to like clicking more than writing code. So they have these building blocks and they can connect this. For example, there is this thresholding to separate the foreground from the background. Um, then you have, for example, some morphological operations where you can put this further in for some pre-processing. Then you have your labeling approach. And at the end, you need to grab the image again with your label image to get the statistics table we saw at the end. So that's what other guys are doing. and they. Um, then build some code based upon this. Um, and we will see at the end how our system compares to this. Okay, so now we are at the presentation, at the demonstration, and before we demonstrate this, if you want to try this at home, you can try this at home, free to, it's uh, safe, yeah. You need <laughs> some preliminaries to be fulfilled, and these are just the two that I highlighted in both. First of all, record. This is just the current version. I tried with the current version, it works. Um, then you need this big record package. Um, it doesn't use a SDF or something like this. It's just a package. And um, however, when you use a system with a proper package management system like uh, Linux and macOS, um, you need some other packages where the C library depends on. And uh, then the installation is quite easy. You just have to run the install record file and if necessary it compiles all the dependencies. If not, for example, under, win under Windows, the binaries are just shipped with the distribution and you can just start right on the way. Okay, so it's demo time. So this is mainly how it looks like in Racket, not in common disk. It's quite easy, so 
So let's just uh, get through the code and then we press the run button. So that's how you enter modules in bracket. Then just for convenience, uh, we will define for the image directory, which is uh, just the current directory, because I don't have any fancy archive for images right now. We load this cell image and then we open the viewer just to give an impression how does it look like. A bit more interesting is here we we'll use functional extensions of the record package to do the thresholding. So what we mainly use is a mapping, like the map you all know, or the map car you all know, but it's in an image version. So an image is a special kind of array. You cannot use a map like you know from lists. But this is very similar. You have this number, which is mainly a decider. It is above or below the threshold. And then you set a pixel to a quite high value. First one's a white value, five minutes, OK? And we just do this by the red channel. Then we have some pre-processing. I'll skip that. And we use the labeling approach here, together with the extract features, to get the feature table. And the feature table itself is again an image, however, with quite changed semantics. So what you have now here is uh, that on the image ref of the statistics, you have your columns here, which correspond to the entries like the left and the right boundary and so on and so on for each region. And uh, the row is the region of the table. And if you want, for example, look for a circle light, you can also see, OK, if the width and height ratio is quite equal, then we can say it's circle light. I know it's not perfect because if we have uh, something along like this, yeah, so then it's also bad. Uh, but for the first idea, this is uh, quite sufficient. And then we can uh, use some filtering on our whole labels using these circle light predicate and at the end compose this to an image. So just when we press the run button, it takes some time because it also needs to load the image. But then you see it's uh, quite fast here. This is uh, the initial image we saw earlier. And here we have a raw mask image. Put it here because I need some place here. Yeah? Then here some pre-processing is performed. And here you have, of course, now, really good result because there are some things misclassified because they couldn't be split up by the pre-processing. But that just gives you an idea with very basic uh, lines of code and very basic algorithms what you get. Okay, slides. There are a few. Um, still time. Uh, I think we don't have any time, but. Uh, just to use that non-existing time, um, this also runs on SPCL, yeah, so that's all I can tell you, end of your time. Uh, it looks quite similar, you have some dev files and dev funds and so on and not defines, but it's more or less the same. So, the conclusion. Um, it's been a while, so more or less the uh, last uh, eight years since we invented this integration of functional languages and image processing, and uh, we did so for our students, and now we also use this for research purposes, so it's quite nice, and it started with the Bigra record integration, there are also integrations for Bigra and Commons, and so on, and so on. Um, we improved data types, so we started with very strange data types, but now they are quite clean, they are easy to use, we have a good functional programming layer. I just had the time to present you the mapping, but there are not more functions where you can easily um, include your own functions to go over the image. The execution speed was, uh, in the last two years, dramatically increased. And uh, we are continuously expanding functionality. And uh, just for the symposium and for the current summer term, I also wrote a documentation, a proper documentation, um, never underestimate the work, but I hope it's worth it. So currently we are on release 1.5, and uh, there is also a bigger CL for common use integration now. Sorry for no current release there, but uh, it also works. Um, and if you're interested in, I can also provide you the files that I use for this demo.
for record as well as for comments. So, right now, the library is powerful enough for interactive image and region analysis, so that's more or less what I wanted to show you today, to go to the region level, use statistics, and work with this. We tested it with newbies, with students all over, and just to come to my final slide, you may remember this um, from the GUI clicky approach. So, what can we say from a commoners perspective or from a record perspective on this? So, first of all, you have to decide for the values, okay? Something like this, whatever this means. Um, but now you have this, so how far is it from commoners? So, actually, not very far, at least from record. So, that's just a currying on a function, currying on another function, currying on another function, and uh, okay, that's just the function. So, whenever you end up with some graphical representation like this, you can easily transfer it into this representation, and then you are free if your arrows maybe present functional composition, or you apply and push variables through in a streamwise manner, or whatever. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a decision because we thought that Commodus would have a much better performance in RAND. And this was uh, true for some years. Um, I think until the ELS 2015, 15, where some guys gave me really valuable information on how to speed up a binary access and foreign memory in RACKET because there are some hidden issues with hidden checks that, if you're not familiar, you will never find in the code. And if you remove these checks of uh, uh, memory access, then you get really fast in record too. So right now, I'm not quite sure, I haven't tested yet, what is faster. But uh, it works quite smooth on both. Yeah. Has your SPCL version also removed some checks, or is it just pure SPCL? Ah, oh, and SPCL is just pure SPCL. Yeah. More questions? I wonder if you can uh, work with colors too, like um, I imagine if it could be possible to use the same kind of algorithm to like count trees in a forest just from a picture. Or get to see so that's, that's just, oh, okay, I have to, oh, it's still on the presentation mode and PowerPoint. So if you just if you just enter image or variable or symbol image, then you see that it's mainly not the single image, but it's just a composition of the array. So that's mainly um, the way we store images. And we are not restricted, at least for processing, we are not restricted to any number of bands. So you can also process images with 12 or 15 or 17 bands. But if you want to display it, uh, it has to be of 1, which is interpreted as a gray value, 3 RGB, or 4 RGB, and an alpha chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, what was the use of this FFDVD? Yeah, it was, it was simply to go to the spectral space and back if you needed. So For example, to design filters. And so what, what do you need it? Here I don't need it at all. But since the <laughs> the um, functions are inside the library you need for compilation ones. If you strike them out, it's perfectly okay, so then you don't have any other functionality. Yeah. No questions? Okay. Thank you.